Hey there guys, welcome to another Train Some Classic video. I feel like it's been a hot, hot minute because there hasn't been a whole hell of a lot of content uh, for the American side of uh, Train Some Classic, but I feel like we finally got something uh, worth noting that looks pretty interesting. This is by a Train Sim uh, community member, Bernard Deschamps, who is a, a French community member who made these freeware items, which you see here before us, Galloping Goose number seven, of course. Very, very neat, very interesting. Uh, and these, of course, are free. You'll have to go to his website and grab these to download them. I will link down below and uh, show you where you need to go to get these but you're going to get two variants you're going to get the non um snow plowed variant which is just the standard one and you're going to get a snow plowed variant as well as two scenery pieces which are the original pierce arrow model 33 which you can see on the far right there is what this thing is built out of and there is also a flatbed truck that is included with it as well just to kind of create your own little scenes So here, of course, is a obvious, notable, and famous piece of Americana railroading, especially in the western and narrow gauge portion of uh, North America or the United States, and possibly what the Rio Grande Southern, for which these ran, uh, was known for, was the uh, the galloping geese, or they were known as motors. They later got the name uh, galloping geese. But uh, they were built in the 30s as a way to keep the railroad operational on a limited budget. Uh, of course, being near bankruptcy, as they were, I think, a few times or uh, a, a span of the RGS lifetime. Uh, but the RGS needed to keep its U.S. mail and parcel contract. And that being said, they had to come up with a way to keep things running. So that's where you get these funky funky looking things here hauling primarily mail of course and parcel but uh, a little bit of freight and the odd passenger as well uh, now they were masterminded and built at the Ridgeway shops of the Rio Grande Southern uh, and seven were built total this being number seven and of course all of them almost all of them I think six of them remain completely intact to this day and mostly operational uh, at the Colorado Railroad Museum so number seven which we have here in front of us this is all this pack contains is number seven it doesn't contain one through six but they kind of learned a lot the rio grande southern of one through six uh building number seven here but number seven was built 1936 which was converted uh from a 1926 pierce arrow model 33 which is this vehicular automobile we have on the left here uh of course of which all these damn sheep are blocking uh let's see they, of course, you know, underwent a ton of uh, heavy body modification in the frame and all that just to get it to be able to run on the rails. Uh, but largely, the front of the thing looks pretty much the same. They, of course, swapped the, uh, you know, the trucks to be able to run on the narrow gauge rails. Uh, they got a leaf in the front. I think the backs have uh, coil. Of course, each one double axle. The one in the middle is powered. Uh, from a drive shaft uh, coming from the engine and this thing originally had a, uh, a Ford V8 which is pretty cool and uh, equipped with air brakes now I think this one is uh, the only one that originally came with air brakes on it from the get-go some of them did not the Rio Grande Southern learned a lot of nasty lessons of these things derailing and, and all that good stuff uh, and so they went ahead and applied uh, air brakes in this thing but uh, they weighed about 16,500 pounds. Well, not they. This one did, number seven, because they were all unique, each and every one. This, this one was definitely its own thing. So they, of course, had uh, person's compartments in the cab or the front uh, of the vehicle. Uh, the fuel and water was on the roof, that kind of roof rack you see uh, on top of the cab there. Um, let's see of course they've got the box part which was a bespoke kind of built thing which uh also got updated and changed over the years um a, a few times but it was essentially like a small box car that they built on the back of it which of course carried you know parcels freight things like that mail uh and it also came with a cooler or what we know 
today as a refrigerator, although, of course, it did not have interior coolant, you know, besides a gigantic big-ass block of ice, which they would throw in there, which, you know, they would need to use for perishables uh, when it got warm. And then for the other 11 months out of the year, it also had a coal uh, burner, which would keep things warm, you know, instead of freezing. So this was unique in that as well as the, I think the other six, some of the other six had a coal stove, whereas this one had a coal stove and the, uh, what we know as a refrigerator. So the gaggle of geese were fully utilized by the uh, Rio Grande Southern until 1950 when they, of course, finally straw that broke the camel's back type of thing they finally lost the uh, u.s mail contract which was kind of keeping it alive uh, for for quite a while as well as they had a, uh, a kind of a contract or funding which wasn't known until many years later by the u.s government uh for yellow cake uranium um you know in the uh what was it early mid 40s so that kept it alive as well uh, something neat about that and that, uh, you know, Department of State or War Department or what else, they would put uh, these kind of stencils on the doors here saying, uh, and that's what's neat about this one here in this particular case, is it actually says Defense Supplies Corporation, Washington, D.C., owner and lesser. So, you know, it was kind of their stuff, so they put their stencil on it. Um, but these things were already well known. I mean, you know, 40s into the early 50s by rail fans at the time you know not different much different from you or i uh they were already well into these things these things were very popular and cool and sought after and people wanted to get you know a look up close and so they used them uh in the tourist industry and they kind of kept some of the rail alive uh using these things and they transformed them a bit uh made them a bit safer but mainly you know opened up the box car a bit uh, added some door steps, things like that. They kind of cut these big holes down the side, uh, basically so people can see out uh, and kind of what it looks like today. So this was like, this isn't its original form because they also changed the uh, the kind of the, the Rio Grande Sunrise logo you see there. That came a little bit later. I don't think this was the 100% the original form. This was kind of like in the middle. Um, probably you know when it was most used so the rio grande southern actually called them motors they just called them motors that's that's what they were they weren't locomotives they were motors they didn't they surely didn't call them geese that came later uh mainly from when they kind of entered the tourist phase of their lifespan i think you know, there's varying reports. Some say from, you know, the way they waddled back and forth on the rails, as did uh, the locomotives, a.k.a. the, the uh, nickname Mud Hen. Um, not only that, but the horn as well. So, like, things were starting to change in the States and the world and everywhere else as far as, uh, you know, railroading, uh, where these had air horns, uh, very early air horn versus the old steam whistle. So that, you know, I guess someone thought it sounded like a goose as well. All right, so enough riffraffing. Let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Uh, this is the original form. You are, too, going to get the uh, snowplow variant, which looks just like this one, but it has a snowplow on the front for the uh, winter months in these steep, steep canyons and mountains. Um, so over here is the Pierce Arrow. This is this thing uh, that it's derived from, and it's pretty damn cool that this is included because you can kind of take a look at, you know, what it came from. And it very much still kind of retains that. So, so the guy that uh, that kind of Frankenstein these things obviously widened the cab. So you can see the back of the cab kind of widening as it goes farther away. Uh, whereas that is obviously a lot more narrow. This would not have fit very well on the road, especially in the friggin' you know 1920s or 30s. Uh, the headlights obviously had to be changed they had to remove the fenders of course it did not have you know the typical axle uh like automobiles had back in the day and they also added the third headlight on the top here as well but uh, a lot of it you kind of retained you know the, the the same characteristics and look of the uh, of the old car itself so that's going to come with this pack if you choose to so it's like two files you got the file of the geese 
and then you get the file of the uh, little scenery items which you can add as well so you're going to get that not only that and the geese but this old flat truck over here as well which says uh carriage b wilson telluride colorado it's got a, a fake phone number i don't know it might be real try and call it no don't do that don't do that yeah I, I just don't maybe maybe try it just don't say i told you to try it so anyway this is the goose now yes it kind of does look very mstse uh you know it's not the most crispy um thing in the world as as far as textures go but it's freeware you know you're, you're not expected to pay for this somebody you know took their own personal time and and wanted to make this thing which is pretty damn cool because the rio grande southern is known for the motors or the geese and so it's it's pretty damn neat that we've got something like this to use it is fully uh animated and usable if you would like to do so or you can just have it sitting on some side tracks or whatnot just to add you know in case of course you have the rio grande southern now of course you do not need the rio grande southern uh by milepost simulations which came out uh, a couple of months ago but it definitely would be nice to have and it's cool just having these things uh laying around here now so it you know it looks okay model wise that the trucks and the wheels look pretty darn good and spot on again they're not the you know the sharpest things in the world but again this is freeware you got the uh the axle back here being driven by the drive shaft they did some kind of funky witch doctory stuff to get that working um and of course it uh, it drove the other wheel as well with that chain and then the rear set as well and it was articulated of course so it's got a big box this is like a standard box car at the time it's pretty darn big uh and then of course up here you've got your fuel tank and your water tank for the radiator and the sounds so i've, I've kind of been keeping the sounds uh, a bit lower uh, recording this because they loop a little bit uh, you know, but I'm not going to sit here and pick this thing apart because it's, you know, it's a cool piece of old school Americana for railroading and it's free. Uh, you know, so it's it's not like something you're expected to pay like 20 bucks for. So it is pretty darn neat in that regard, uh, but you can operate it. And that's what we're going to do here next. All right. Welcome to the interior of number seven. <laughs> Uh, this thing is extremely uh, Microsoft train semi um, and, and the windows are kind of fuzzy it is it is old but uh, it's pretty much what the inside of this thing looks like so uh, the guy did a hell of a job you know doing this thing and, and whipping it up um, and again it's freeware so you can't you know you can't really blame that uh, you can see down here in a new modern uh, it looks like an oil pressure gauge um, you know sort of like a boost gauge or something like that so you can see that down there this over here of course is your air brake handle you got your gauges down here the speedo does work and what's neat about this is you've got your uh, your gear shift so it does have gears i think it's got one through four i haven't figured out how to use the damn thing uh via the keyboard i have to actually you know click and hold it or get up the hideous f4 hud which i hate with an unholy passion uh and and do it that way as well and you can see it's actually animated and it shifts it, it moves around so that's pretty darn neat as well i believe the the gas pedal down there actually works as well so if you listen closely i'm going to turn it up some here you kind of hear this revving over and over well this thing is off if you look down here uh you know to the bottom left area it says zero rpm so let's go ahead and fire it up see the key move now it sounds okay it kind of sounds like an old Ford eight cylinder I mean it's just that loop you know if if I knew how to do sounds and, and train sim I might take that in audacity and try and smooth that out a little bit so it doesn't sound like it's dying every time a revolution happens um, you know but there's that that's just the idle the run is a little bit better we'll go ahead and get the horn and bell out of the way it's very crunchy 
Uh, it's, it's, it's got a lot of looping, and if you hold the space bar down too long, it'll just cut out, and it, it does weird things. The bell, I think, is the same exact bell from the Rio Grande Southern rolling stock that came with the root. And uh, Clear Creek, I think. I think that's the same bell from Clear Creek as well. All right, let's get this some bitch in gear. Get the F4 HUD. Good throw at the first gear. Get rid of the brakes. She's rolling. Give her a little juice. There you go. So as soon as you apply a little bit of throttle, you know it changes. You don't, <laughs> you don't hear that just endless uh, loop of the idle. It is a little bit better. There's still a bit of a loop, but again, it's it's freeware. You know, you can't you can't really sit here and 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 dog on it. It's such a neat thing as well. Um, you know, the geese, the old RGS motors. Let's get the track lined up there. All right, so that's gear one. The physics, from what I can tell, because I've kind of run this thing over uh, over the loop, over the Ophir loop, um, a little bit. Probably, probably spent the better part of an hour just messing around with these things, trying to set the video up and all that good stuff. But uh, the physics actually seem okay on this thing. It's not out of control, but if you're on a flat piece of track, which we're coming up to here, uh, right here through Telluride, going uh, east, west... <laughs> I, uh, I know my directions really well. Yeah, we're going west. So there's actually a really nice uh, straight bit of track here. And we're going to see what this son of a bitch can do. Uh, I did not mean to do that. I thought we were going straight. That's fine. You can actually check out the articulation then since we inadvertently did the, the switch there. Let's see. So it actually bends. It's it's kind of a two-part vehicle when you're placing it down in the editor. There you go. See a bit of the articulation. So it's like a two-part thing. So think of it like uh, when you're placing a locomotive in the tender to the locomotive. It's the same kind of deal. You place the motor car down and then the uh, box as well. So we're still in first gear. You do have to run through the gears. I mean, you don't have to. You could just go straight to four and get crazy. All right, that's full power. See the horn lever move. That's the bell. <laughs> the speedo works. We're going to hit 88 miles an hour and go back in time here shortly. We're doing 42. Now this is somewhat straight bit of track here when you when you get you know on some of the uh, inclines and all that it does take a little more work and the brakes feel nice too so the, you know the brakes aren't like totally out of control just keep going here to see what she'll do it says we're getting wheel slip too man Things like a Pro Street drag car spinning the wheels in fourth gear. Doing 47. Ah, the headlights. There's your headlights. Nothing spectacular. They're headlights. They're just a white color. Alright, we'll get rid of the, uh, the throttle here. Throw the brakes on. Actually, no, I'm going to leave a little throttle just so I don't have to hear that idle. There we go. I mean, these things work very heavy. Uh, you know, about 16,000 pounds thereabouts. Keep breaking. Come on. I, I know I still got it in gear. Got some power going just because I don't want to hear the uh, idle sound. Stop it. Yeah, it's not letting me do it. <laughs> We're just going to have to turn it off. Oh, dearie me. See, it takes a while to come to a stop, which is nice. As long as you don't 
you know, slam the emergency. And we'll shut her down. And that's it, guys. That's Goose number seven for the Rio Grande Southern uh, freeware item, which, of course, I'll link down below where you can go and find that. You just install it via the RWP file, which is uh, fairly easy. It's it's an old way to do things in train sim, but it's easy. You know, one, two click, you're done. Uh, you know, it's it's neat. It's it's freeware. It doesn't sound the best. Some areas don't look the best, but it's uh, it's a cool piece of uh railroad memorabilia which uh still to this day runs uh which is pretty neat but you can go and get this thing for free i'll link it down below thanks for watching guys i'll see you next time bye